Hello, my name is Cynthia and welcome to my Flosstube channel. I'm happy to be here with you today to share with you my stitching, some projects I've been working on, some gifts and um, future plans, and let's go ahead and get started. Today is Tuesday, June the 29th, <laughs> I have to look at the calendar, and I have been absent for most of the month. We traveled for about two weeks, so I apologize if I'm a little rusty today. I was struggling already with remembering how to open my videos and how to set up my camera. So um, let's go ahead and get started with what I finished. I had explained in my last video that I was intending to stitch this Plum Street Sampler Bigfoot Bunch. This is, a, I have a couple other of these stack um, patterns, or at least I call them stacks. They're not really all stacks. Obviously this one has a little more spread out fun little monsters, but the Bigfoot um, bunch was to commemorate our trip to Broken Bow, Oklahoma, where they have a Bigfoot festival and Bigfoot paraphernalia everywhere. And I was able to finish this. This was also in collaboration with Sherry, the Colorado cross-stitcher for her cross-stitch camp. It's a virtual event with some challenges and prizes online. And so I wanted to complete it before June was um, over and I'm glad that I could. I finished it as I told you with a pocket on the back. This is some Lady Dot Velveteen. I believe it came from Daylene. Thank you, Daylene. <laughs> she shared that with me and I've been waiting for a special project to use it. It's very lush and nice. And I was able to combine my love of paper crafting. I know a lot of us have scrapbooked over the years and haven't really gotten as much um, use out of our scrapbook supplies as we used to. But I wanted something that was sort of a protected um, cover for these photos. They're just printouts from my computer. I wanted to have a way to protect these photos as they went in and out of the pocket. So I used a um, slide um, that I had from my scrapbooking days and I got it on clearance at Big Lots. I'm sure they're not around anymore, but if you have anything like that, it's just a little clear slide that has a hole in the middle. And not all of the photo is actually revealed in the frame, but it's clear. so. It actually shows the faces. There's the Bigfoot uh, statue from our last trip. And then here's the one from our trip in 2018. And I dated those on the back with just a little detail of who's there and where we are. And I used a lot of um, Tim Holtz Distress Ink, if you're familiar with that. It's a great product. This is really circusy colors, like bright. And I used um, a lot of Distress Ink. I did it like twice, I think. And then the tag as well was something I had from my scrapbooking days and I inked that really well and added another reinforcer so it won't tear. And this Sari Silk, as I dye Sari Silk, any project I do, I'll show you a photo of another one I did. Um, I dye extra just so I have, this used to be gold and I dipped it in brown and I came out with olive green. So I wanted everything to be kind of woodsy and green. And speaking of woodsy, the um, front of this also I completely changed, as I do. Um, I wasn't sure how well received this was on the campsite when they have the Facebook group for the cross stitch camp. Someone said, that's really interesting. <laughs> and like, at first I think I got one like and I was like, well, maybe this is weird. I don't know. I like it. I used this um, embroidery detail instead of having like a jungly leaf which we do not have in Oklahoma. I wanted it to look like pine and kind of some scraggly, I think they call them blackjack oaks. We have those everywhere around North Texas and South Oklahoma, Southeastern. And um, I wanted it to kind of fill in in a similar way. I tried to, I placed the um, faces that are peeking out on in the same position and then I just kind of filled over top. My favorite thing is this little over one. I don't know if it's gonna focus. 
little guy over here. You can just see his eyeballs. And I had to go in twice because at first he wasn't quite covered, but I wanted him to be pretty obscured. And then this lady up here, she only has like one eyeball. That's the mom and the baby and the dad. So I had a lot of fun with that project and just more um, inspiration, I think, for y'all. I hope to make a project your own. If you don't care for certain elements of it, but you like it overall, you can always change it. And I did find some inspiration from Pinterest. All I could find was this photo of pine trees. Theirs look a lot more than, a lot better than mine do, but there was no credit on who took that photo and mine aren't as dense, but I particularly like the way those side um, branches right there turned out. So just practicing it got better as I went. The first ones were a little bit weird and then I just kept filling in, just kept filling in, filling in. And I used two shades of green. You can kind of tell it's 934. And I think it's 9.35, so it's kind of that black avocado, so it's real dark, but kind of like it felt on our hike when we went through the um, different areas around Broken Bow. We took a long hike one day, and I um, have done pockets before, I want to say, um, but it's been a while. I turned the edge over with the trim first, and then I doubled it as I sewed. So there were three layers to sew. This is just some old linen that was a fail from Joann's because it's not even at all. It's like really long, weird stitches when you use it. So I thought, well, I'll hang on to it. And sure enough, it came in handy. It's just a little bit darker and a little bit bigger of holes. This is 32 count from Victoria Motto. My <laughs> problem I had, I have done that invisible stitch before on the bottom, but I'm so used to sewing all the way around with my pillows that I turn them out and I don't have the issue of meeting up at the bottom because I've gone all the way around. And when I tried to leave a mark or a um, opening at the bottom of this, I sewed higher and then lower. <laughs> and I went over it twice and it's still a little bit crooked, but that's okay. I did the best I could. And when it's sitting in the dough bowl, you really can't tell. <laughs> so that's our secret as I shared it with everyone, but it is um, not going to come out and it's, you know, good enough. So the sawdust is in there. I had several pieces of it still kind of showing if you can catch some of that. It has a little weird bee creature. I changed the color of the wings to white. They were supposed to be black, but I changed those and I didn't put as many flowers. And I think I um, changed the color of the flowers. They were supposed to be light and these were dark, but it doesn't really matter. I like those colors. They're really pretty, pretty flosses. It's funny when you see these um, colors, you don't think, oh, that's what you're getting here. But yeah, just DMC, really pretty. So I enjoyed that. And I will be giving away the Bigfoot pattern, not this time because I have some other giveaways, but in the near future. So hang around for that. And just some buttons um, for my grandma's sewing box. And I love these because <laughs> they had shirt fabric still attached. You know how um, my grandma was from the depression era, so she would save everything. So she had, um, obviously ripped these buttons off of a, a shirt or a pair of pants or something, <laughs> probably shirt. So they had pieces of that old shirt I had to pick off before I put them on here, but that made me smile. So Bigfoot was my main finish for the month. Like I said, not a lot of time at home, excuse me, while we were traveling. So I did what I could. When I got back, I realized I was a month behind on my Halloween rules. So I went ahead and pulled out this Carve a Pumpkin. I may have shown just the very beginning part of Carve a Pumpkin because I think I had the outline done, but I hadn't done any of the stitching inside and I hadn't started on this block. So I went ahead and because it's so simple and I was really tired <laughs> after all of our um, travels. Oh, that still has a needle in it. I um, thought this will be nice and simple. I can get it done and I did. So here is block, I believe five and six at the halfway point. And I used a floss for the pumpkin that I dyed myself from some artiste threads. I've used those several times, I've mentioned them, but they are officially gone because Dahlia ate the last couple pieces that I needed for these owls and little stinker she's gonna get some yarn in her stomach I'm trying to make sure she's passing it but I don't want to spend a whole lot of time in that endeavor but 
she has eaten two different strands that were the very last of what I had. So, and this was a one-off. I dyed that myself. I can't repeat it, I don't believe. Um, but that's okay. I have lots of oranges going on in this project. This was that same thread up top. I liked it because it was so variegated. I didn't even follow the pattern. The pattern had two different flosses, but I just said, I'm gonna keep going with this one and get what I get. And I liked it. So this one is, I believe, Fragrant Clove from, is that a classic color works? I used it on one of Priscilla's patterns, so probably classic, she likes those best. And then a Victorian motto, that's a nice orange. That's gonna have buttons. That's why it doesn't have any eyes right now. Those are supposed to be buttons. And those owls are so cute. I started making this one the same size as that one, so I had to rip it out, stitch it again, <laughs> but that's okay. And the um, little stars, I changed to gray. They were supposed to be brown, and I thought, well, I'd rather have kind of a bluey gray and yellow for my stars and moon, because it says stay up late. And I don't know what brown would have to do there. So I change the colors as I want. If there's something that I um, don't really care for, like I changed, I think, the lettering on... No, I've changed the motifs on those purple crosses. And they don't quite match perfectly, but that's okay. <laughs> and having a lot of fun with it. So here it is halfway. And I'm going to continue, I believe, and no pressure, Helen. My friend Helen D and I are swapping after we're done with these projects. She's getting rules and I'm getting, um, is it jingles? Yeah, jingles. So I'm on a schedule, but there, if it ends up in February or March, there is no rush, really, Helen. Don't worry. But I wanted to try to do two a month so that I could have the complete um, project done by Halloween. And if you follow the instructions, it's really easy stitching. It's just you have to pay attention. <laughs> They're not always the same as you expect. So those are my finishes for June. Like I said, not a ton, but I did have fun with that. Bigfoot, I got to use some paper crafting and some of my supplies I pulled out that had dust on them for sure and so I enjoyed that if you want to try to make a pocket on the back of a pillow it's a really nice way to have a keepsake particularly if it is commemorating something uh, maybe a birthday or a, a child's birth something like that grandchild's birth so I hope that you um, might try that and please tag me if you do and the other thing I worked on we had been gifted a beautiful very fancy dining set which my style in sort of leans toward more cottage and um i don't know more rustic and things i find on the side of the road but as um people are kind of simplifying their lives in our church <laughs> we're getting some really beautiful um furniture and who can turn that down so we have this gorgeous set and it clashes with all of the colors in my front room and so as it happens when you get one thing, you have to change everything. I was able to change my corner hutch and I'll insert a photo or maybe a video of that here. And before when it was light blue, it clashed horribly with that goldeny olive green upholstery. And uh, one of my friends in my stitching group said, well, just change the upholstery on the dining set. But it is not just a seat. It's a beautifully detailed um, back front um, and back with piping and there's no way I have those skills to upholster so and it's beautiful fabric It's in perfect condition. So I'm just gonna change my room. So I'll be sharing some of that as the summer goes along I hope to have a tour in August. I'm gonna be painting painting and trying to um, Stain and and regroup with some of my decor and I will share that um, I've had several views recently on my primitive um, Fourth of July tour from last year if you want to check that out I haven't had a ton of changes especially in the TV room But I will link that below if you want to check that out. Let me get my whips and I'll be right back Two of these whips were supposed to be finishes but as life happens you can't plan <laughs> as you hope I had a vaccine on Sunday evening and I was on track to finish these little last bits but um, I felt really horrible yesterday I had a lot of body aches and a little low grade fever so this project stayed where it was about halfway maybe a little more 
this um, section here is is not filled in as a pond but note this section here this is all open and so with some ducks so really I just have to fill in this green space that house I changed to teal and the door I um, used colors that are in the set um, I really like this kind of terracotta 355 red and it matches the little window I have this on if you remember my spring finish all I have to do is put this on a piece of foam core and pop it on of that little window so I thought let's go ahead and get this done it's overstayed its welcome <laughs> and as I stitch it I really do appreciate Prairie Schooler is so classic. I have to do a little bit more leaves on this weeping willow. The house is all done. The window panes weren't symmetrical. That's the way it's charted. So I just left it. Here goes a fighter jet. But um, it has some more sunflowers on the side and daisies. And I wanted to put in these red flowers. I just really like the way this is turning out. I have plans next month to stitch some sunflower projects. So this is going to fit in with that because it's a sunflower. So I'll hopefully have several to show you next time, seeing as I'm not planning on traveling a ton, although I will travel later this weekend. Um, and that'll factor into my plans. And I didn't finish the R. <laughs> you can see, I know the R is missing. I just, I was waiting to get to those red flowers so that I could use, do you do that? Like, where's all the red going to go? Let me wait till I can finish one thread instead of re-threading every five minutes so and i did get a little bit off on that house i did this while i was at a doctor's appointment with my daughter and the lighting was not great and i do not like monaco um at least not this monaco it's very stiff i can't believe i did the entire barbara anna love never fails on it i i remember my fingers really hurting <laughs> and as i've used finer linen now i'm like oh it doesn't have to feel that way <laughs> when you're done but i don't have a picture of this um because i've made working copies the copy is just about to fall apart in fact i've had it so long but i do use a little tag on my threads so that I know what project it is. And there's all four of the Prairie Seasons. Priscilla did these. I know, um, I think Olivia from Pumpkin Hollow Quilts did this as too a long time ago. I have that pinned, Olivia, on my Pinterest board from your blog. <laughs> but it's a really pretty stitch and so classic. So that I almost got done. And then the one I even more almost got done was my... Um, Hawkrun Hollow. And I had done quite a bit of work on this um, as soon as I got back. I was really surprised with how quickly it went. There's um, not as much in this block, but there's plenty as every Hawkrun Village block does, or every Hawkrun Village. I mean, every Hawkrun um, carriage house piece. There's just so much stitching in each block. You think, oh, it won't take me that long. And then you get in there and you're like, goodness and I don't want to lose my needle because I was hoping to finish this this morning but my time is ticking away and I thought I'm just going to show you where I am and then next time I'll give you more updates so that's okay here I am like mid mid thread on that lettering I just have a few more words at the top and it's done I was really pleased it has blue birds instead of black. They're softer, kind of almost minty green. And I have what I call a humility tree on this little stack here. Um, you can tell, but it's not initially obvious that I used the wrong color on that tree. Again, really tired from vacation. I remember getting home and just wanting to put a few stitches in. And I the uh, tree over here does not match. And I kept going because I thought, okay, only God is perfect. This is like the little girls or, um, or the women in older times that would leave a mistake in on purpose to show that only God is perfect. But this is my humility tree. <laughs> Just when you think, oh, I've got this down. I'm doing awesome. <laughs> you use the wrong color. And so I left it in because I like that. Here's the whole thing. I'm sorry if you're getting tired of seeing this. I've worked on it for two years, so I know... But I'm picking up a little bit of steam as I go. This is block seven for me. Only block five in the piece, but I'm all the way down here. So I will have um, a different order, obviously. And I'm not sure where I'll go next. Working in the middle when you're stitching in hand with this behemoth was a little tricky. This is the first block I've done in the middle. So I was kind of thinking, ugh, I don't have as easy a time to get to that 
I might do an edge one next. So I still have to block in. I'm using sarsaparilla from Gentle Arts. I'm only using one strand on the border because it's a fancy floss and it doesn't matter. And then I'm using two strands on the actual blocks. Very graphic and very um, pretty to me. So I really like that one. Here's the whole piece. I'm sure y'all have seen it, but I'm not sure if I'm gonna work on the horse or the mill next. I just am excited to keep moving on that. And then I had one more piece, I'll put it over here, that um, I decided I'm gonna put on the back burner until my all of my prey school or prey seasons are done. I jumped into some more seasonal pieces just because um, this color scheme was more the direction I was going in my front window and I've always wanted to do that piece. So I did work on this while I was traveling because it's on 28 count and it's really simple. But I decided to stop and I'm darkening it up just a little bit. It's not gonna be quite as bright. I don't think that's the red that's called for and I'm tweeting some of my own yellow there because I didn't have the fancy floss. But I do love this little design and it's gonna go so cute in my front window. So those will make another appearance. I'm gonna continue to collect them but not until my prairie schoolers are done. That's part of my plans for um, moving forward. I'm trying to stay focused and not um, flit around like a bird, as I said. So let me show you um, some plans I have. Um, actually, no, let me show you the haul um, that I received. A lot of it was um, gifts or just a couple of PDFs and then some freebies that I wanted to share. And then I'll talk about plans and what I've been up to at the end of the video. So let me get this out and I'll be right back. I flipped my camera around and I hope there wasn't a bar on the edge of my video. I'll try to edit that out if I can. If not, just know I'm a little bit rusty and I apologize. Um, but I was taking a sip of my um, coffee as I got ready for the next segment and I wanted to um, just give a Thank you to all of our servicemen. This mug comes from my brother who is in the US Navy as a medical doctor. And I just am so thankful for my brother, Randy and his service and my dad as well. And then um, all the other soldiers and um, servicemen out there and their wives and families. I wanted to say thank you for your service as we look toward celebrating uh, America's birthday with all the problems that we have. I know we still have people that are committed and that are sacrificing their time and their family's time to protect our country. So I wanted to say thank you and happy 4th of July before I forgot. Um, I had several, two or three things sent in the mail that I wasn't expecting. Um, so I wanted to share those. Eloise on Instagram, I'll link her handle below. I believe she's from California. I'm getting some California friends. I like that. I lived in Yosemite National Park for three months when I was 20 years old, 19 years old. Yeah, um, as a um, hotel worker so that I could do mission work for the Southern Baptist Convention. And so I um, and my aunt and a lot of my cousins are in California, so I love California. Kim Goldman's there and several friends, but Eloise is a new friend that helped me out. Like I said, Dahlia's been eating my string, or eating my, um, what do I say string? Eating my floss, and um, the uh, 362 I was completely out of. So, And it's a huge hill, so um, Eloise sent what she had left. I think I'll get another one just in case, but she helped me in a spot, so, and sent me such a sweet note. So thank you, Eloise. I enjoyed watching you stitch all creatures. Your stitching is amazing, and you were so kind to send that. I also got a gift from a giveaway winner um, as it's not my finish. Sorry, Dahlia is so loud. That hound dog comes out in her bark. Hang on just a second. Okay, hopefully she's calm now. I think she's barking at maybe a solicitor going around. Hopefully he won't ring my doorbell. Um, but as I was saying about my California friends, my new California friends, Danette sent me this... Um, Lottie Da chart, my country. I don't have very many of Lottie Da's patterns and I love her. So thank you. And it comes with the floss to do it. So I am so excited to have that. 
and it goes with my bird theme too. And she sent me a beautiful card. I finished for her as a giveaway winner, her um, pillow for um, just a thank you for subscribing and following my channel. And I love finishing. I know I'm sort of um, a minority in that, but I um, just wanted to encourage y'all. I'll insert some pictures of the finish. I didn't get a full picture of it, Danette. I don't know if you can email me that. It's not a big deal if you don't, but um, I took a picture of the different details. Um, her stitching was very pretty, by the way. And I had to scrap my first plan. I, I get a little more nervous when I'm finishing someone else's object. I've only done that a couple times, but I want it to be so nice. And um, my first little quilt squares that I tried to put together were awful um oh and i forgot to share about my quilt well i put some quilting onto this runner speaking of quilting and i kind of goofed up the back side of it i am not a um immediate success at quilting but that's okay you have to learn the hard way sometimes and with this pillow though it was beyond what i could repair so i scrapped that and I dyed um, the linen that I cut off when I trimmed Annette's pillow. I dyed that to match one of the mauve flosses, the pinky mauve flosses. And I thought that turned out so pretty. So I hadn't thought of that before, but using the same linen that you trim and just dipping that in dye, it coordinates so nicely because it's, you know, the same fabric. It's just a different color. And then I used some... Um, I think corduroy that I also dyed and some silk that I dyed. So that is my happy place to be dyeing colors with silk and linen. And I just, uh, I love doing that. So Danette, it was a pleasure. You didn't have to send this uh, beautiful pattern, but I thank you nonetheless. I'm glad to have another friend in California. And then I, I was supposed to attend the um, retreat for Stitching Texas in April, but my mom was in the hospital and I ended up going to Tulsa to spend time with her. And so I got a whole bunch of little goodies from the um, Stitch Texas retreat that had been postponed like two or three times. And finally they did meet, but like I said, my mom was sick. So um, I had a chart from Summer House um, Stitchworks about Virtuous Bold. That's really pretty. And it came with a week's, is this Oscar Becky? We have been talking in my stitching group about how we can't find Oscar. And that looks like Oscar, but it's not labeled. Maybe not. It's a beautiful floss, though. So I always love to get that. And I had a little honeybee waxer that's in here. And um, some other uh, pretty little pins and some more trim. So this was a really nice surprise. I wasn't expecting that. I knew I had kind of lost my... Um, money when I wasn't able to come and that was okay. I mean, a lot of that happened with, um, the quarantine. We didn't get to do things as planned, so that's okay, but it was fun to get that. And then another, um, gift, I call it a gift because Melissa from Pinker and Pumpkin is so generous with her free patterns. As I move into my sunflower and bee segment of the year. I am so looking forward to stitching this. Is that not adorable? Such a good job, Melissa. And it's very small. I love the little wagon with a hive. So Sorry if this editing is choppy. I'm having to edit out Dahlia and my kids. <laughs> so this is a gift. I consider it a gift from Melissa at Pinker and Pumpkin Quilting Blogspot. She does so many free patterns and I had to have this one. I love bees and honeycomb or not honeycomb, um, bee skips. And so I was very happy to download that and I'll try to link that below. Another beautiful freebie and gift from Fox and Rabbit Designs, which I have been a fan of since I ordered their first market sampler, um, Mahala Barber, which is a whip of mine. Um, this is another shepherd sampler. It says the Lord is my shepherd. And I think it's just taken from motifs and, um, they have a new, um, floss tube channel for Fox and rabbit, and they show some beautiful things. So I will try to link them down below as well. I encourage you to check out their floss tube. This was a gift for I think a thousand subscribers, but they're well over that now. It might've been for 3000. They're pushing five. So they're very talented, both she and her husband. 
they do blackberry rabbit, fox and rabbit, and linens and threads. So it gets a little bit confusing who they are, but this is something you can download from their YouTube channel. Um, oh, it says celebrating 1000. So they're well past that now, but that's such a pretty chart. It reminds me of my, um, my other shepherd sampler by Brenda Gervais, which I'll pull out next month. It would almost make a nice companion. So love that. We'll stitch that eventually. And then I had caved on, and it wasn't hard. I had caved on a sow with um, my friends, Becky Socks for Mum and Rachel Wenzel from uh, Stitch and Be Well. Both have floss tube channels. And we spend a lot of time together with our other friends and, wanted to um, do a stitch along together on Lucy Beam Love and Stitches, though he seemeth sleeping. This is so cool because people have really adapted it with different colorways and I'm hoping to get to Silver Needle this weekend. We're going to visit um, my husband's parents. It's his birthday on Friday. And so I'm hoping on Saturday maybe to get over there and pick up some threads. If not, I'll order them online. But um, I'm excited to play with this and it's not very big. It kind of snuck in and booted out Louisa Coolmore for just a little bit um, until I get this done. And it says, I, I'm sure y'all have already seen it, um, about Christ the boat is keeping though he seemeth sleeping. And the other reason I had to do this one, um, when I get farther into this, I'll show you some video. I still have it on my phone, but we were able to go to Israel um, couple years ago now, I think it was 2018 into 2019, and we actually were in a boat just like Jesus's in the story in the Bible and on the Sea of Galilee. So this story is even more special to me because that was such a memory from our trip in Israel um, to be out on that boat and see just how in, um, tense that sea is. It's not, it's not an ocean, but it's a huge, like, so deep um, lake. And so I really... Re resonated with this. Um, plus, it's just a good reminder, though he seemeth sleeping, he has the boat um, in his keeping. So, trust in him and have no fear. So it says. Oh, I can't read the the original, but I'll be sharing more of that as we get closer. I just wanted to say, and it will be a stitch along that y'all are free to join if you have that piece already, or if it's a whip. Um, I don't remember the hashtag yet, but I'll share that soon. So feel free. And then one other thing, this was a new one that I just couldn't resist from um, Priscilla and Chelsea. I did the honeybee cup last year, and this is a honey jar. And I'm doing a lot of sunflowers. I'll show you those some more in just a few minutes. And so I went ahead and downloaded that and it has a little sunflower freebie with it too. I can't show it to you because it doesn't have a picture, but it just says sunflowers for sale. So I hope to get to these as soon as I finish my prairie school or summer. And then I will share those with you next time. So, oh, and one more thing, this um, Hancock's of Paducah sent me, um, or I ordered from them some black, I haven't even opened this. <laughs> I've been too busy. Um, some black quilting fabric for my grandmother's, um, Sue bonnet. Um, oh, what's she called? I always say it wrong. Sun bonnet Sue. That's what it is. And she has a parasol too. So it's kind of a variant of that pattern with my old clothes and my uh, grandma's old fabrics. A lot of them are flower sack. And so I'm going to put that on black squares and I hope to show you some of that next time i went ahead and purchased it and my quilting like i said um i'll show you a little bit closer i had never done this before and i still need to take a class but i did the x's i know my friend marlene said that that was how she preferred and i was pretty straight i feel like but i did have some bunching on my backing i um thought i had pinned well enough it's not terrible as i look closer it's like it's okay um, I thought I had really pinned it well and I'd used basting safety pins, but, um, I think I'll use the spray because I just have a little home machine. I don't have a big, you know, um, arm on my machine. So it was really bunchy and, and it's so tiny. It fits on my bar. I have a narrow counter there and I wanted it to go under my, um, 4th of July stuff. And I'm going to have Becky help me. Um, hopefully I haven't told you this, Becky, <laughs> when we meet in July, we're hoping to meet up. I'm going to ask her how to, I'm going to try to get the binding ready and have her help me place it. Cause I just, 
I don't know. Sometimes I, I think I'm a visual learner, but I'm almost a kinesthetic learner too, because I have to actually do things and I realize, oh, that's why you have to do that. So I need some one-on-one -on -one with that. I need some help, but I will get it and hopefully move forward on that as well. And let me show you my plans really quickly and then talk about what I've been up to. I have a giveaway at the end that um, is some extra books from our trip when we went to the Southern Baptist Convention. So um, not everyone will probably be interested in that, but if you are, um, hang around for just a bit and I will show you. I can mail those out um, to anyone that's interested. And yeah, I'll be right back. Okay, my basket was more full than I expected. So sorry if I'm a little disjointed for this video, um, but I almost forgot not related to my um, Baptist Bible studies and things, I did have another giveaway that actually comes from my friend um, Frankie of um, The Wicked Stepmother. She had sent this sampler to me. It's so cute and quirky. It's a um, cat with a banjo. This looks like something Stephanie would have loved, does it not? <laughs> kind of a Lindy Stitches vibe to me. But um, I love the way she did those letters really faded. And she offered this. She sent me a copy and then she asked if I would like to share to let her know who wins. And I will send your email to Frankie and she will send this PDF chart to you. So it's a design from her, an original design. And I didn't print out, I didn't bring up the back page. I think it's called Cat with a Fiddle, Fiddling Cat Sampler. <laughs> I'll put that up here if I'm wrong. But Fiddling Cat Sampler, and it just has some really beautiful faded pinks and a fun cat with a, with a um, collar. So like I said, it reminds me a little bit of Stephanie Webb, kind of a Lindy Stitches vibe, but I thought it was really cute. So thank you, Frankie, for sharing that with us and anyone that's interested. Just say um, in your comment and I will do a random generator if, if several of you want it. So that was one thing that's not Baptist related. Um, and a couple things I wanted to share to you just because I'm pulling out some sunflower projects. And if you're interested in sunflowers at this time of the year as well, I wanted to show you. Um, and it looks like my family's home, so I'm running out of time, but here is Sunflower Garden by Sub Rosa. Hang on just a second. Okay, I've got to talk fast in case it gets a little crowded um, or a little loud with all the family, but here's the Sub Rosa Sunflower Garden, and I got that last year. I had this fabric dyed myself, and I've been getting a start on that, but I hope to finish that one. It's not very large and it's so cute. So just wanted to show you that one. And then also I had um, completed the June Snowflower Diary um, Joyful World style, and I wanna do this one for um, August. So I'm gonna change the tree just a little bit and put August on there and um, hope to get this one done. So that's another freebie. Um, the Sub Rosa is a PDF that you can download from Etsy, and I'll try to link it below. And then the last one I wanted to share um, is also something you can download from PDF. That's what I did. Miss McGuire's um, Bee Charmer. I had started on her skirt. These are just some whips that I'm hoping to get to in, oh, sorry, I'm shaking you, in July and August. I'm gonna have a whole, like I said, sunflower bee. Oh, I hadn't gotten very much done. I thought I had more, but there's her skirt and just DMC colors. They're really pretty too when you pull the DMC. So I hope to show you those soon, finished. And I might work on a Christmas ornament. Um, I'll put a picture of it here. I had the chart, but it's only the, um, the actual chart, not the cover. So I'm trying to do an ornament for my um, cross stitch challenge in July. She wanted us to do a piece that was by a designer we've never stitched before. And my friend Marissa, who I'm supposed to be leading a sal with and failing horribly, <laughs> um, had some really cute ornaments that I wanted to stitch for my girls. So I will um, hopefully get some work in on those. They're only about 50 by 50 and um, I think that's it for plans. I did get a new notebook. Someone asked me on Instagram, how do you know what to stitch next? Um, 
And like I said, I'm trying to be more focused and get things done before I put in some of these projects I'm showing you. <laughs> I'm really close on the prairie seasons though. So these are my focus whips. Um, I have Hawker and Hollow and All Creatures. Sally Spencer, I actually bumped out Louisa for Though He Seemed Sleeping. And then I have Shepherd Sampler and Halloween Rules. And I'm gonna pull out a Mania Stitch from um, all the way back in 2019 and try to work on that for three days. So I'm doing five days on my largest one and then four days and then three and three. I was doing three, two, one, but I can't finish something in one day. My schedule is just too crazy. So I'm only doing um, four projects instead of five. That way you'll have a little bit of variety and I'm hoping that I'm not boring you with the same whips over and over, but hopefully I will finish more if I'm more focused. So that will be fun to share as well. And I have a little bit of um, life updates, what I've been up to and um, some links in YouTube that I wanted to share that were helpful to me or I enjoyed and some books that were gifted to me at the Southern Baptist Convention. I actually got like two copies of these. So I wanted to share and I can send those out with media rate pretty inexpensively. So I will let you know about those and that's all the stitching I have. If you um, are interested in kind of my testimony and what God showed me while I was in Nashville um, over the convention in June, then I will bid you uh, farewell and thank you for watching. If you do want to stick around, I had um, kind of a list of what I've been reading, what I've been watching, and what I've been doing. Um, I had started a book um, because I've fallen down a rabbit hole with BookTube. I know um, we all kind of adopt <laughs> these little groups you know we have quilty tube now and then floss tube and book tube has been around for a long time but I had never really watched until I found Krista of books and jams she is the same age as me um, she's a single lady who works as a children's minister and has like she's like my reading twin and so I've so enjoyed hearing her talk about books it's kind of reawakened a love I've had my whole life before I stitched before I did anything I was a bookworm just always have my nose in a book um, and per her recommendation I pulled out um, from the library a fall of miracles Susan Meisner is really well regarded I haven't read any of her books before or even heard of her but they all have like you know four and a half stars out of 3,000 on Amazon or something so really well um, written and this one deals with an embroidered scarf and the mystery of um, where that came from something to do with a, a factory fi uh, fire for a shirt waist um, factory it has a dual timeline so if you're looking for a good summer book so far I'm only a chapter in this a fall of miracles by Susan Meisner it's a little bit stitchy related and it's really really good so far I also had um, listened to a um, more of Dr. Edie. She has been sort of my therapist as I walk with Dahlia. Um, I listen to a different podcast and have found so much help. I've shared it with several of my personal friends and I, I shared it a couple videos back, but I'll link another one of hers that was very helpful to me as well as, and I didn't get the lady's name. I just happened upon it. I think because I'm listening to these therapists online, um, that talked about cognitive distortions, which I know my friend Rachel is um, a counselor and we've talked before about just some thinking that can really keep us um, in a state of overwhelm and anxiety and depression. And, and there are really some um, simple things you can do to kind of combat that thinking. I know scripture talks a lot about taking every thought captive and and this is sort of along those lines, but sometimes we need other points of view to even realize what we're doing in our mind um, and the way that that affects our lives. So I, I really encourage you to listen to this video, especially if you struggle with depression and anxiety. Um, a lot of times identifying those thoughts in our, in our mind that are um, really just keeping us uh, stuck or in a bad place. Um, I know that's not what God intends for us. So I think it's helpful to listen to that. So I will link the um, video from 
the cognitive distortions. She has an entire series. I'm just getting started on it, but it was so good. I wanted to share. And then also Dr. Edie with her um, podcast and Krista. Um, I don't know about the cognitive distortion lady, but the other two ladies are believers. So I feel confident in recommending their um, counsel and their wisdom being from a place of um, acknowledging God's role in our life and um, how he is the ultimate healer. Um, the other thing I wanted to share, oh, I had a opportunity and say a couple prayers for me if you don't mind. Um, I'm going to be teaching about 50 women how to cross stitch. I don't know how I get myself into these things. I had, um, I'll put a, a insert a picture here of the 13th rule that I designed for my Lizzie K Christmas rules a couple years ago. Y'all may remember that if you followed me for a while and some of you asked for it. I didn't have software to um, actually make that. And um, I think I can figure it out now. It may be handwritten, I don't know. But I am making an ornament out of that um, little extra block. It's gonna say Jesus is the reason and have a manger. It's very, very simple. But I'm a little bit nervous to teach um, newbies of all ages from probably teenagers to women that are asking me if this cross stitch project is going to be printed on the fabric. So I've got a lot of different levels that I'm trying to um, work with and I'm going to have to buy, you know, like 50 hoops, 50 needles, the threads. So it's going to be a whole thing. Um, I'm working on that in the next couple weeks. So say a prayer for me. And if you're in the Metroplex, please message me. You can come if you want to. It's $10 and it's going to be a fun night of crafting. And um, like I said, it's a design that I am in charge of. So I will share that with you when it is done and also give you a free copy of that. So um, at least the ornament. I don't want to do the Lizzie Kate piece because it feels a little bit... Um, I don't know, like copyrightish weird, but I, um, I just did it for personal use and the, the manger and the baby are my own design. So I don't feel bad about sharing that. Um, I also wanted to share, um, some Bible study books that I was gifted at the convention. When we go as messengers for the Southern Baptist convention, you just get a whole lot of swag. It's really nice. I got several t-shirts and, um, different, books and notebooks and bags and just lots of fun things. So um, I had, like I said, too many and I've shared several times with our church library. So I thought, well, let me share these. This is a how to pray when you don't know what to say by Sheila Walsh. And we were running a little late the morning she um, spoke. We couldn't get a parking spot, so I missed her, but uh, she did sing at the end. And I've known of Sheila Walsh for a long time. She has a great testimony. I think she's um, from the UK. And this book looks really good, How to Pray. So if you are interested in a copy of this, I would love to send it to you. Just say, um, sometimes I put words in there that people say in other comments, so it gets confusing. Say um, Walsh, and hopefully you don't have this name. Say W-A-L-S-H, and I'll know that you're interested in the Sheila Walsh. I know I have some Sheilas that follow me, so don't say Sheila, say Walsh. The other one, I think I'll just do two of those. Um, this one, I've followed Jen Wilkin for quite some time. She's a local um, Bible study teacher to me, and I had followed her when she gave out her Bible studies online just as a PDF, and now she has been picked up by Lifeway, our Baptist bookstore, and put out these um, beautiful studies. This is a study of Exodus. She's very, um, I would say, kind of an advanced Bible teacher. But she does break things down in a very comprehensive way. Her Bible studies have hundreds and hundreds of women that attend in Flower Mound here in the Dallas-Fort Worth area and waiting list to get into her Bible study. So if that tells you how good of a teacher she is, you could also leave this for your church or you can go through it by yourself. I'm going to try to encourage our ladies to go through this with me. But um, God of Deliverance by Jen Wilkin. I would love to send that to you. It has... Um, Bible memory and just a weekly study that you can go through. And my husband said something really good in a sermon last week. I know I'm a little biased, but he was actually quoting a famous pastor. But, you know, if um, we don't pray or read our Bible, prayer is 
breathing out and reading our Bible is breathing in where it's like we're not breathing. And so I thought that was really good. I'm kind of I'm miffing the or messing up the quote, but I thought that was really helpful to think of um, that it's as vital to us to read our Bible and to pray as it is to breathe in and to breathe out. And so um, I just like to encourage you in that way. If you want to um, study this one, say Exodus, E-X-O-D-U-S. Exodus. And if you're a new believer or not very familiar with the Bible, that's okay too. Like I said, it's it's a little advanced. It's some deep waters, but she is a, a fantastic teacher. So those two books, and then also Frankie's um, Fiddling Cat um, Sampler. So those are three gifts that I would like to share with you and Frankie would like to share with you on my behalf. And I thank you for sticking with me. It's been a little bit he um, hectic and my mind is a little bit unsettled, but um, I hope that you felt inspiration and can find some projects that you'd like to try um, or have some Bible uh, inspiration. And if you have any questions about the Baptist Convention, I know that's in national news and some of you might not have any interest in that, but if you are a Baptist and you have some questions, my husband wrote a beautiful paper. It's about three pages, maybe more, um, just breaking down what's going on, why is there so much division, and what should we do? And um, he was very um, succinct in explaining all of the different um, barriers that we're dealing with right now with race and with um, other divisions that are coming about between conservatives and it, it was kind of discouraging to be in Nashville to be honest in some ways but then also there's hope and it's always good to get with other ministers and to feel that energy and know that you're not alone that there's a lot of people out there trying to help and encourage and and share God's light so thank you for watching as I finish all my videos the book of Psalm verse 90 chapter 90 verse 17 says may the favor of the Lord our God be upon us and establish the work of our hands thanks for watching